really excited to be talking to you guys about color today. So the first thing about color in Premiere is understanding how Premiere manages color. So we're gonna go into Premiere settings and we're gonna go into color. So then it's gonna show us our display color management, extended dynamic range monitoring. I keep these on all the time. Another way it manages your color is in your sequence settings, which is gonna be very particular to exactly the timeline that we are currently working on. You have to make sure that your sequence is selected. Then we're gonna go into sequence settings. You can also adjust your color management here. Another way that we do it is per clip. They have now released that when you bring your footage in, it applies a lot automatically. So if you're working in S-Log or any flat footage, it is immediately going to bring you to Rec. 709. A lot is a lookup table. So it's basically going to help you bring your footage from something like this that has less saturation and it's gonna give you full color to get it kind of like to your, your base layer. So we're gonna pick a clip that I know already has it. We're gonna right click on our clip and we're gonna scroll down to modify color. We're gonna use the media color space. This isn't Rec. 7 already, but the important part is that there's an embedded LUT here, which means this is not something that you're going to apply in the color grid later. It is immediately already baked in there for you. And then the final way that it manages color is if you are going to select your clip, we can see that you have an input LUT over here. You could have one already baked in, or you could not, and import one from here. These are different than the LUTs that you could import in the project panel. I know this is a lot, but stick with me. It is a LUT to talk about exactly where. <laughs> That was so good. <laughs> so we've got this LUT on here. It's a little bit warm. So in our Lumetri color panel, again, we have no input LUT here. I'm just gonna use what we have in our basic correction. There is this little white balance friend, which we love. So what we can do here is just use this little white balance eyedropper and find the closest thing to white in here, which for me is going to be this wall. And that is already such a huge difference of balancing out. You can see the mm. temperature changed, the tint changed. We are looking at our waveform lumoscope. So this is gonna tell me the high, like the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows, my lights and my darks. You want to have your skin tones be somewhere between 60 to 70 for lighter skin tones. For darker ones, you're gonna to wanna to say 40 to 60. You really don't want to have your darks hit this zero line and certainly not go below it. So we're gonna to go to our HSL secondary. We are gonna to go to our vector scope. This line right here is going to show you your skin tones. You want your skin tones to be as close as possible to that center line to show that they're balanced. So we're gonna to go to our color wheels and match. So this is gonna be where your highlights, your midtones, and your shadows exist. If I just wanna make the whites a little bit warmer, I'm gonna go into my highlights right here and I'm just gonna drag up just a hair. That's all color is, it's just like little tweaks here and there. We're gonna move on to another example. So you can see that this is flatter. There is less information there. So if you do wanna bring your footage in and um, in your settings, you have no input LUT here. So I can start from the ground up. And this is also a great way to just teach yourself that the highlights are a little crushed and by crushed, I mean really, really bright. Dragging your shadows down just to add a little more contrast in there so we can see on our scope. I can recover my highlights a little bit. We're looking at the top of Tony's head here and this <laughs> is where it's super, like what they call hot. So it's important to know that if something is super clipped at the top or at the bottom, it's knowing where that point is. But since I know that it's this, I think it's okay. Maybe bring up contrast a little bit more and then let's bring up the saturation a little bit and then we'll bring our exposure up. So it's just, again, these tiny tweaks to get you to a Rec. 7 look, but let's say I deeply, deeply enjoy how this looks and you've spent all of this time making this beautiful image and then you're like, uh-oh, uh-oh. I have another one. How am I gonna apply this? What am I gonna do? I've made all of these beautiful adjustments. Premiere makes it super easy to do that. We're gonna select this new clip. So we are gonna go into our comparison view in our color wheels and match. So right here is where you're gonna drag your reference point. And I want my footage on the right to match my footage on the left. So we wanna make sure we're selecting the proper clip that we want adjusted. We don't wanna adjust the left clip to itself. We wanna make sure we hit apply match and then it's going to match the color as close as possible from the left to the right. So that's before and that's after. And I think that this balances them really, really well. Woo! I'm going to show you the really cool thing in Premiere. This is with a Rec. 7 that was applied as I brought it in. But what Premiere did, which is super 
awesome, is a wide gamut tone map. So now they've just completely removed you having to work in a Rec 7 space and they're giving you the entire gamut space. So they've mm. given you the full longitude that you want. So let's say Direct 709 and I want to just drag my, down my exposure. That really muddies it and makes it super, super gray. But in my settings, if I now go down to wide gamut, look at the exposure change. Oh, I'm sorry. This thing is so cool. And now I can go in and edit all of my other things if I want to change my exposure a little bit there. This is so much more of a well-balanced image. Super excited to talk about it with you guys. We hope you enjoyed it. I just hope that this breaks down the ability and the stigma of grading color in Premiere because the tools be are here.